hi, it's Dr. Joni, and I'm back for another week on Facebook Live. This time we're on um, my Facebook page called Rapid Injury Recovery with Chinese Sports Psychology. So that's something new that just happened this weekend. Uh, Facebook is letting us act just like anybody else down in the U.S. Oh, we just blacked out a little bit there. I guess that was my internet uh, thing, but I guess. <laughs> anyway, that was just for a very split second, so welcome. This week we're going to be talking about what to do immediately after a blow to the head. So this is um, a point of contention for a lot of people because they think that you can't diagnose anything on the sidelines of, um, of, uh, a, of a sports event but indeed you really can find out quite a bit if we just had enough criteria to look at and so I've got about 10 points to talk to you about today now I want to make it very clear that this is for um, what I'm going to be talking about today is for when somebody gets injured on um, the field of a sports sporting event uh, if somebody is having difficulty on a construction site because of a construction accident due to their work if if they've you know like fallen a couple of stories or even one story you know eight feet uh... from uh, above the ground then definitely these people have to be checked out at a hospital make sure in that case that they get to emergency as soon as possible uh, anything that's serious, you know, like um, falling off a cliff, definitely, you know, or debris flying off uh, a tall building and hitting uh, somebody uh, in their head, you know, definitely that needs to go and have emergency attention. But if you're on the sports field or on the rink, at your local rink, um, then definitely you can have uh, a few things that you can do and look for, okay? So let your friends know that this is happening right now, and let's get to it, okay? So what to do immediately after a blow to the head. Okay, so I have my notes here, because I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget anything. So... One, <laughs> number one, if you're an adult, if you're the parent or the coach or a teacher, the number one thing that you should be doing is stay calm. Do not panic, okay? Do not panic because remember, and we really are, we're all connected. People can feel what you feel and they can feel what you are feeling, you can feel what they're feeling. So the thing is, is to stay calm. Stay calm. Because panic only makes things worse, because that's what I call stress. Okay, anything that is negative, has a negative emotional charge, is going to be stressful. Okay, number two. Give the person room, okay? Like in first aid, they tell you, give the person room. Don't crowd around them. You know, uh, do ask, ask him questions or ask her questions around how they feel, okay? But give them room to breathe. Ask them if they need your help, but not really waiting for an answer. But you want to give them some time to reorient. Okay, reorient. Number three, after they've given, uh, you've given them some time, you know, to sit around, you know, and ask them to read something for you. So in this case, I want you to pull out something as simple as a credit card. You give it to them and you ask them to read the numbers out loud to you. So not just the numbers, but everything that's on it, okay? So you should be able to tell what their eyesight is like and 
if they're not giving you any feedback about whether they can see something or whether they're having difficulty seeing it, ask them. Okay, so don't wait for them to tell you, you ask them. You know, so you just keep being calm and you keep asking them a few questions now and then that are relevant to the things that you're checking on with them. Okay, number four. So, yes, you check for blurred vision. You can um, ask them, oops, <laughs> oh, the thing that I forgot to say before you pull out that credit card is to check their eyes for dilated pupils. Okay, dilated pupils. When I write out my notes on this in my blog, I'll have everything <laughs> in a more organized fashion. But before you pull out the credit card and have them try to read, I want you to take a good look at their eyes. And in that case, you will have to get close up, okay? And you want to see if their, eye, if their pupils are dilated. So, if you're outside and the sun is bright, then usually the pupils are quite small, okay? So that's normal. In dim light or at nighttime, the pupils are usually quite big in order to bring in as much light as possible. So that's what I mean by dilated, that they're, the pupils are quite big, okay? So if you're looking at really large black pupils and it's broad daylight and it's really bright outside, then you know that there's a problem there. So, so you probably don't really need them to do the reading of the credit card, but you know, you can try that. Anyways, okay, so the eyes are it. The eyes are very important. So for the time being, you ask them to just sit up for the time being until you finished examining them and to give them a break. Six, okay, now if after a while they ask you to go back onto the field, then that's when you can have them try to stand up. Okay, so number seven, ask them to stand up and observe how well they do that, how easily it is for them to stand up. If they're having difficulties standing up, then you know there's a problem. Now, if they are able to stand up, the next thing that you should ask them to do is actually to walk a certain distance. Okay, now you can stay close to them just in case they might be a little tipsy, okay? And because they might fall. And so hopefully if they are tipsy, you can tell if they are, okay? You should be able to tell if they're a bit unstable because you know what a normal walk looks like. Hopefully you know what this person is like. But the thing is, is that everybody walks normally in a certain way so you be, should be able to tell if what you see is normal or not. You see, all this is really based on common sense. All of this is really based on how well you know the person. Because as I talked about two weeks ago, about um, you know signs that your teenager has a concussion, you should know that person well enough in their before picture to compare it with their after picture, after the hit in the head, okay? I want to assure you that it's not that difficult. It really isn't that difficult to tell if somebody is having difficulty or not. And okay, so, so after watching them standing up, getting up, and walking, then I want you to decide in that particular situation, whether it's okay for them to go back on the playing field or back on the ice, okay? So at this point, hopefully some 10 to 15 minutes has gone by, okay? So do take it slow because you don't know how long it's going to take for somebody to be reoriented. Now, the thing that I really want to point out that's really important is that don't take people off the field as soon as any blow to the head happens, okay? I actually want you to observe the reaction of the person who just got the blow to the head. 
because just because they got a hit to the head, it doesn't actually mean that they're going to be in difficulty. Okay, so that's the other thing, is not to panic even at that point. I want some good sense here. I want some common sense. I don't want panicking to go over because after all, so many of us have had blows to the head under so many different circumstances. Really, we have. And it, we, you know, some of us get blows to the head once a year, <laughs> twice a year. If you're playing soccer, yes, you're heading the ball, but heading the ball, if you're prepared for it, is not a problem, okay? It is not a problem because I've witnessed thousands of headings, you know, <laughs> and all you have to do is look at a person, you know, yeah, they're okay, okay? Like I've seen some really bad hits in indoor soccer where somebody has crashed right into the boards head first and they come out and they're fine and they say they're fine and they never miss a game so you know that they are fine okay I want to reassure people that there is nothing wrong with playing a sport because anything can happen as it happened to McCann Utu Jr. he got his really bad concussion from playing basketball because he was dunking the ball and I still have no idea how he hit his head, but he had a concussion in that particular case, okay? The thing is, please do not panic, but be reassured that you are a competent adult who is taking care of a situation, but only when you see somebody who is truly in difficulty, that's when you go through the protocol, the 10-step protocol that I just gave you, okay? All right, so that's it for this week. Thank you very much. I'll be back next week with another topic, and I'll be back on rapid injury recovery with Chinese sports medicine. I'll be back on that channel, on that page, okay? That's where I will be from this point on. In the meantime, if you know somebody who does have a concussion, I really highly recommend that you get some outside-the-box help from my newest book, Heal Your Concussion, How to Quickly and Effectively Get Back in the Game. Because we can't afford any longer to do nothing about concussions. There is something that you can do that is so much more proactive than just mere total rest, okay? We cannot afford to do nothing. We have to be able to take our health and also help those that we are responsible and care for to help them to get better, faster, and get them back into their normal life as soon as possible because that is going to make the difference on whether they return to play back into enjoying life again. We cannot afford for people to be unhappy, okay? Because that will always, always, always lead to much worse consequences. And I want everybody that I am associated with to be a success. I want them to be healthy and I want them to be happy, especially because that is the essence of life. Life is meant to be fun, okay? So until next week, thank you. I'll see you then. Bye.